Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzica from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. The Titans have made official the signings of free agent kicker Nick Folk and defensive lineman Sebastian Joseph, the former Charger, Ram, and 49er. Other NFL free agency news, the Jets signed free agent wideout Mike Williams on a one-year deal yesterday. The Browns signed newly acquired receiver Jerry Judy to a three-year extension worth $58 million, $41 million guaranteed. And new Saints defensive end signing Chase Young reportedly will miss part of training camp due to neck surgery. The men's NCAA tournament first four will continue on tonight. Grambling in Montana State battle for the 16th seed in the Midwest region at 540. Colorado and Boise State play for the 10th seed in the South region. That's at 810. You can hear both of those games with coverage picking up at 6 after 3HL here on The Zone, courtesy of Westwood One. The women's tournament gets underway tonight with the first four. Vanderbilt will battle Columbia for the 12th seed in Regional 3, an 8 p.m. tip-off on ESPNU. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Let's do it on a Wednesday, Blaine and Mickey. Happy hump day to everybody. Shout out to everybody who is watching on Zone TV or listening on the app. Remember, just go to the app store and tell it you want the zone and let it do all the work for you. Every, I mean, that's the way you do it. Then you just take the zone everywhere if you got the app, right? Then everything that you miss, wherever you get your favorite podcast, if you listen to one about, like, cooking, well, you also want to listen to all your zone favorites. So you can just... Add that to your list. Rate, review, subscribe. Blaine and Mickey. Oh man! So could I go? It waits for you. Yeah. Could I do Chat GBD and uh, GBT and uh, and uh, tell me who's going to win the uh, the NCAA tournament? Ooh, well, <laughs> you could probably take some CBD and try to figure out who's going to win. <laughs> 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 I feel like I am taking that. <laughs> I feel like I'm already on that man. And we're off and running. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. I'm a, you up here? You you at my house at night or something? Man? I am not. Speaking of, I. I filled out my Blaine, or my Blaine. Blaine. I filled out <laughs> my bracket go? today, yeah. Blaine. God, I'm sure that wasn't too good. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, I didn't have it filled out, but I filled it out for you today. Uh-oh. Who I have it ready. You have, you have. Who's your? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I, I have two brackets. I have one where I pick Tennessee to win just because I have to have that uh, okay. as a Vols fan. And I have a real one where I have Houston winning over UConn in the national championship. Oh, U of H and UConn. Back to back, right? Yeah, if Tennessee losing those Sweet Sixteen to Creighton, yeah, I just think that's a bad matchup for them. Mm, I know, right? But I got them beating them. I got UNC, but UNC gets beat. UT wins it all. Oh, you got UT I beating UNC yeah, while you're yeah. on your CBD trying to chat. <laughs> I knew you could do GP. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I must be on some CBD. If I got UT winning it, man. And I'm not being home. I just. I feel like, man, if this is if any year bars to get over the hump, man, this is it. And they once you punch through and you get that pressure off your back, man, then you just go bonkers. And so I'm hoping that that does happen. Uh, at least uh, you can't get any worse through the last two games. So I'm figuring they're going to figure it out at some point. I'm hoping because they really haven't figured it out. If connect is not connecting at a rapid rate, what happens? Uh, something bad, I would say. Yeah, no. It, it was Gobi and James better step up. I'm sorry. Besides, you know, Adu and Ziegler, but they got to rise. They've been to the tournament. Oh, so there's not a new over and not, over. Uh, right, so they, they have to. If when need be. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. What if, like, a magical, you know, leprechaun showed up and he told you, those guys can score a combined 15 points a game in the tournament. I'm going to give you that. That's combined. Com- yes, that, combined. And that would be that would triple what they've been doing, basically. Mm-hmm. But if this leprechaun came to you and said, they'll score 15 points a game between the two of them, it could be 10 and 5, 7 and 8, could be any combination. Is that enough from those two guys? Because they've been giving them nothing well, I th- yeah. combined. Oh, absolutely would be enough. But, you know, then Ziggler, Connect, and... They do have to continue to be consistent throughout, not these uh, last games. But, uh, yeah, and just be how they've been in the uh, regular season. I'm, I'm cool with that. You know, putting up, you know, connect, putting up like, you know, 21, 22 uh, consistently. 
Ziggler being, you know, the double-double just like they do. So if they do that, they will go on a run, and it will be one to remember for the Vol fans. So that that I feel like they can do that. Mm. I think they can. Especially now you got everybody attention. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the team. Guess what? You lost the last two games. You played horrific one half, and then the other game you played bad the entire game against Mississippi State. So, yeah, I think, you know, got to remember these guys still are, are young guys, and now they're going to be refocused, re-energized, and, and want to go on a run. So now they got to go execute. Easier said than done, but I, I think they are capable, and I think they have the right mindset. I'm just worried about those two guys I'm talking about because they haven't figured it out consistently throughout the season. Yeah. And I'm hoping it just hits them the right way, and then they come through when they need them the most, even if it's just a big shot that they need. Because I would get all my resources to stop connect. So I, I, I'm going I'm to make those guys make open jump shot. They're going to they're gonna have to beat me. Vescovy's played so poorly recently. You mean missing open shots? Like not have to guard him level of bad. He, he was like shooting like me. and i'm not a shooter no so that and so sometimes you get out of rhythm when you're not in the flow of the offense and Mm -hmm. you're not consistently shooting uh so yeah i'm hoping can't get any worse so i I feel like they're gonna yeah they they better get right game same people that they, they better make it that i don't care how much you win by or how much you're favored by just look good in what you're doing in execution and then get that vibe and get in that rhythm and that mindset the next game. Once you have been, you, know, you can't look past this game, but they, they better win this game. If not, boy, all the boo birds are going to come out, not just to the team. Oh, Mr. Barnes, oh, they will be coming for him. First, first round? Ooh, that would be a nightmare. Oh, if they lose <laughs> in the round of 64. <laughs> I, I I don't know if there's anyone on this planet that can protect them from Vols fans and cri- critics around the world because that would just be they wow that would be embarrassing. Now if you it, now the round of 32 I think is the same same way if you get there the the matchup will be a lot tougher with either Texas or Colorado, Colorado State, State who just right. can we talk about how bad Virginia was yesterday? Oh, I'll stop that. Oh my didn't score for fifty-two real life minutes. Yeah, that that was uh, what they had was worse than watching paint dry. Fourteen. <laughs> that was horrible. I stopped. Well, I, I ain't no way. I'm like, uh, it's wasting my time. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> Dan Wetzel. Valuable. Dan Wetzel tweeted this out this morning. He's a columnist for Yahoo Sports. Virginia basketball recent NCAA results: twenty eighteen lost first game, twenty nineteen won national championship. 21, lost first game. 22, no bid. 23, lost first game. 24, lost first game. The national championship is just... That's over, man. It's uh, Random. <laughs> yeah, he seems like he's still in the 90s. <laughs> you got to turn that thing around, man. That I was mean, the... Way that I turned it... So I turned it on uh, just for a little bit, like halfway into like the first half. And I was like, no, I'm not watching this. Well, here's the thing. If that had been the football committee, they wouldn't have put them in. They would have Florida Stated them. Sorry, Florida State fans. Every hardcore basketball fan I knew was like, nothing they, was they, wasted more in this tournament than giving yeah, Virginia an opportunity to in. be in it. Yeah. Shouldn't have been in it. At a 10 seed. That would have been a 10 seed. <laughs> Not even like a 16. Well, I mean, a power conference team yeah. can't get worse Reputation. than a yeah, that, that, 10 or so. Uh, but... Lost first game, lost first game, no bid. Lost first game, won the national championship, lost first game. He asked, would you take that deal? For the national championship? Yeah. Oh. For what is that, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Uh, that's eight years of playing. Oh, no, sorry, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's six years, sorry, because there wasn't a tournament the one-year math. So for six years. I, I, not I, make it losing the first round four of the times, but win the national championship. I th- I think almost anybody would take that because it would mean you won a national championship. I think it depends mm-hmm. on the program, though. Like, I don't know if a Kentucky or a Duke or those Blue Bloods North Carolina, or North Carolina, Kansas. those Blue Bloods, mm-hmm. but like a Tennessee. How long has it been since Kentucky has won a championship? Oh, uh, they haven't won 
I don't think they've made it out of the per- fa- the first weekend in the past like five years. They haven't made a Sweet 16 <laughs> since 2019. I know that because I had that in my notes for Blake Lovell, who's going to join us next. But now think about that. If you're a Kentucky fan, yeah, your whole life is basketball. And I know they support football too, but I mean, they support the heck out of basketball. It hasn't made a Sweet 16 mm-hmm. since 2019. It's 2024. Ugh. Now, Ooh. I know you said, like, Kansas, North Carolina, there's probably no way they'd do it. But outside of me being, like, three or four programs, I'd be like, we're national championship in six years? Uh, yeah, I'll sign it. National championship? Yeah. And the Vols have never, what, never made Final Four? Mm. You get no. plenty of early exits. I, I think Vol fans would sign up for that. Who was the last SEC team? Am I missing? Well, I guess Kentucky. Winning uh, outside of Kentucky, right? Damn. No, I think that's right. That's it. And that was the Anthony Davis, right? The unibrow year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody from the SEC at some point, we talked about this. They invested all this money in scheduling and coaches. Their whole thing's, oh, no, we're going to hire the best coaches. We're going to schedule better. We're going to do everything. They've spent millions. The payoff is a national championship because if you're at the SEC, I mean, they're not in it to make Elite Eights or Sweet mm-hmm. Six. They're in everything to win it. Yeah. And Sankey's trying to squeeze the life out of the other conferences and, you know, get the tournament expanded for more opportunities for a group of four teams. I mean, that's something he's taking some flag for, yeah. which, by the way, that's my early ding-dong candidate for next week. But let's bring Chuck and Clarksville in. Maybe Chuck can add some levity to the situation. Hey, Chuck. Hey, guys. Hey, I'm a, I'm a U.K. fan, have been for 50 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but you realize we've only won it eight times in, in 90 years? I mean, it just doesn't happen at all. Oh, it's yeah. been 10 years. In 90 years. It's been almost 12 years since we won it the last time. So, mm. you know, it's not unusual to go that long a period of time. Like I said, there's only been – even UCLA won 11 times, but they ain't won anything since 73. So they've had not won anything in 50 years. Well, so, I mean, not more just, so than just winning it, though, uh, Chuck, it's also with, with Kentucky – is that they're getting bounced early? So how do you feel yeah, about and, that being and a Kentucky fan? I'm upset about that. I mean, it's 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 you know it's not what should happen, mm. but unfortunately, you know, March Madness is called March Madness for a reason. Mm. This Kentucky's got caught up into it a little bit sooner than others have lately. So, but Cal Party's on a hot seat. He's going to have to if he can't get them to at least the lead eight. I think he's uh, people are going to start wanting to. to in that uh, lifetime contract, somehow mm. <laughs> we'll see. Ooh, I appreciate what is, that, what is that bio? Appreciate the phone call. Oh, I, I don't even know. Chuck hung up. He said his lifetime contract. Oh, that's the same thing we have here. <laughs> Why did you look like that? I thought, who are you talking about? <laughs> well, like we, Bobby Bowden, you know, <laughs> lifetime contract, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a handful of people who are <sighs> lifetime contract. I would imagine Bill Self probably has the ex- equivalent of that. At, Kansas. Yeah. Hearing someone say only eight national championships in right. 90 years hurts hurts my soul because Tennessee has not had one. Man. <laughs> and I think I would, po- I would, you know what I would do for just one? The point he's trying to make is, you know, that's one every decade or so. And Still. it's and it's been a little over a decade. So he's saying they're right on schedule to win their next no, one. But, but Oh, is that what he was saying? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think that's subtly what he was saying I there. I don't know. I think that's exactly what he was intimating oh, to us well, there. Maybe Cheeseburger got something on that. Cheeseburger knows right. everything and sings and raps and does it all and is named after a delicious food that is one of my favorites. Hello, Cheeseburger. Hey, Mickey, how y'all doing today? Good, man. Hey, I'm doing good, too. Hey, first off, before I get to my stuff, I think y'all should come do a radio show up at FedEx Ground where I work at uh, Sunday to Thursday. Y'all should come do a radio show there. Hey, I'll be y'all's bodyguard, too. Just come up there to FedEx and let them, let them know you're going to do a radio show up there one day. Hey, also, about this March Madness, you know, I'm a, I'm a Florida State fan, basketball, football, and, you know, I, I, I support the local hometown team here, Vanderbilt, but I've got UConn cutting out of this. I think Utah, UConn, the way I've watched them play some this year, they are talented. Mm-hmm. Purdue is talented, too. They got Purdue's got a chance, but I see UConn repeating this year. And uh, I've got Tennessee balls. I've got them getting bounced in the elite eight. Mm. 
Oh, jeez. Hey, if they got to the Elite Eight, I yeah. think everybody would be like, yeah. Yeah, okay. They, they, make, they got good. over the snide, yep. It, it's, it's a step up. Yeah, with Barnes. Too. 100% it is. Oh, Barnes up. makes the Elite Eight with this squad. I think everybody's hunky-dory. He gets another one of those. Here's six more years on your contract. Oh, they better. Because you know that better. happens. <laughs> I know that they better not. Because he's like, I mean, what if somebody else calls? <laughs> James Franklin will probably get, if he gets, if Barnes gets the Elite Eight, James Franklin will turn it into an extension for himself. And then, <laughs> and then next year, the, the next year it's oh, the man, Final okay. Four, and the next year it's the Nap- National Championship. You got to go one step at a time. Oh, okay, with a whole different team with a lot of dudes leaving. I don't know if that's going to happen. Maybe, maybe they can find some extra <laughs> eligibility for Dog Connect. Maybe they got the transfer portal, so yeah. The TP. Uh, all right, let's do this. Uh, Blake Lovell's going to join us next. We'll continue this basketball discussion. we got plenty of football discussion coming up as well today, but Blake Lovell next to break down SEC chances in the NCAA tournament and more on Blaine and Mickey, powered by all four seasons garage doors. There are a lot of diagnoses out there, and there's a pill for everything. But not all diagnoses are accurate, and not all pills are good for you. Hey, it's Blaine Bishop. And we get a diagnosis for European auto repair, get a second opinion before you make a major decision. And Eurofix is the home for second opinions. And before you spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on European vehicle repair from a diagnosis, go to Eurofix. It could not only save your vehicle's life, but could actually save you from a lot of stress that ruins your weekend. And life's too short to get stressed out and angry. So be happy and go to Eurofix. And at Eurofix, you get a free 15-minute no-rinse inspection with an estimate every visit and not high-pressure uh, sales tactics. And at Eurofix, you also get a three-year nationwide warranty and a free loaner car with every repair appointment. And Eurofix, as you know, never pays for the pricing. The dealer place for all the pricing. Located in Franklin, Hunter Oaks, Murfreesboro, Bellmead, and now Mount Juliet. All you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX. Or you can just visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. But always tell them Blaine said you. Below MSRP, below MSRP, below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two Rivers Ford sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone, getting wild, talking about March Madness because there's no time wilder than this. So come on and feel some noise here from Break Level, who joins us now at Southeastern 14. That is uh, where he does his work. He is at the Blake Level, which why did we all not put the before our name on social media? Blake, are you just fired up? Like you get up every morning and just brush your teeth with sunshine because you love this time of year so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun, guys. I think just, you know, the SEC getting eight teams in and you look at just the different matchups, like it is just uh, some of these are so fascinating. And I think this entire bracket's fascinating based on kind of all the possibilities. We say it every year, but I think you've just got a lot of really good teams out there. And so it's going to make for a fun couple of days and next couple of weeks for sure. Well, who's since you mentioned the bracket, whose team in the SEC do you like their draw the most? Whose team do you like? the least yeah i would say the least and, and maybe this isn't fair necessarily because i don't know that this is a team people have going very far but south carolina i think has just been a brutal part of the bracket over there of course they're with tennessee in that same uh eight teams uh down there uh in the midwest of course but i don't like their first round matchup i wouldn't like their second round matchup against Creighton. i just think that when you break those teams down they do a lot of things that, that could really uh make things difficult for south carolina um, so I think that they would probably be the choice. I mean, and that's even saying the fact that, you know, Auburn stuck with UConn, which Auburn has no business being stuck with UConn, but it is what it is. I think the best path to the final four for some of these teams, um, I mean, I've mentioned, and, and I know it's kind of bewildered Kentucky fans a little bit that I, I can't say I love this matchup with Oakland as much as you would think for a three fourteen game, but I still think Kentucky probably has the best path to the final four. Uh, based on just kind of looking at the way it breaks down. I'll give you the most chaotic one. I think that's Alabama, because uh, I think the West is just going to be absolutely wild. Uh, I mean, pun intended. Like, there are so many teams I could see coming out of the West. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's very interesting, this draw for these teams. Hanging out with the Blake Level on Twitter, uh, Southeastern 14, covering all things SEC. Well, uh, first of all, how many brackets did you fill out, or did you fill out a bracket, or just one? So, Here's what we did. So like, I'll fill one out, um, you know, just with friends and stuff. We just did one live an hour ago. Ooh. And let me just tell you guys how much I hate the bracket that I filled out <laughs> live on this one hour What ago. do you mean? What was the like, restrictions on what you could do? Why well, you hate it? No, it's just what you do is like, you know, you get the pressure from people commenting and all this other stuff. So you're like, all right, you get a little, little peer pressure as you're filling this thing out. And oh, ultimately, I'll just tell you, I had Houston and Auburn in the national championship. In that one, uh, I picked Houston to win the whole thing. Now, we all know Houston's got some injuries here, and it's probably not the smartest pick on my part. But, you know, you just start picking games. You're like, well, I'm going to advance that team there and that team there. And um, But, yeah, I, I honestly, though, I think you, you could realistically say that the winner of Auburn and UConn, if we get that game in the Sweet 16, I would not bat an eye and say whoever wins that game is going to win the whole thing. Mm. So, it's interesting. Oh, man. Well, with Big Level, host of – at 14 Southeastern. Now to the important things, I guess. Uh, who was snubbed and didn't make the tournament? Matt could be outside the SEC. And the only reason I'm thinking about that is I was watching Virginia the other night. What, what the heck was going on? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have taken uh, a lot of teams over Virginia. I would have taken multiple teams over Virginia to prevent what we had to watch uh, last night in that game. I mean, I think you could look at it. I mean, I think the committee clearly in a couple cases overvalued the ACC um, you know, you can even see that. I mean, Clemson's a very popular upset pick to lose to New Mexico is the 11, 6 11 game there. So I wasn't surprised that Virginia got in, but I think you could have looked around, even in Oklahoma, as strong as the, you know, the Big 12 is. Oklahoma was the first team left out. Um, was their resume just overly going to wow anybody? Not necessarily, but you can understand why, why they were right there in that conversation. I mean, Indiana State, I think the team, you know, in the Missouri Valley, offensively, they would have been. You want to talk about a contrast. If you'd have seen Indiana State play last night and Virginia play, two teams completely opposite um, because Indiana State's one of the best offensive teams out there. So I would have loved to see them get in over Virginia. But, you know, unfortunately, I think in terms of, like, snubs, I can't say there was a lot this year because mm -hmm. even, like, people were rooting for St. John's and all this. But I think that was just Patino. Their resume wasn't very good. Um, and so, yeah, but give me Indiana State or even Oklahoma, maybe Pitt uh, over Virginia. So mm -hmm. reason why I wanted to ask that because maybe – that won't happen at some point because the NCAA tournament expands. What are your thoughts when you hear expanding the NCAA tournament? 
Best. I think it's just inevitable at this point, guys. I think it's a hundred percent going to happen. Uh, I don't know that that's the best thing because, like you just said, Blaine, it's like if we expanded it by ten teams this year. I mean, yeah, I can make a case for Oklahoma or Pitt or somebody, but are those teams that I think that really you know are going to have a chance to win multiple games in the tournament? No, like I don't, I don't think that. But I mean, it is the NCAA tournament. We have crazy things happen every year, just like we did last year, but. I just I think to me when it does expand, the question they're going to have to answer, and they never will. But you know I don't want a tournament that all of a sudden becomes, you know, the 11th best team in the SEC is getting in. Even as much as I enjoy the SEC, I don't want the 11th team in the SEC getting in over the second best team, you know, in the Colonial or the second best team uh, in the Missouri Valley or anything like that. Which is my fear is that we'll just start loading up with all these power conference teams that are average at best. Uh, and then, you know, the teams that are actually out there that aren't going to get the visibility and aren't very good, they still don't get in the tournament or uh, are very good. You know, in these mid-major leagues, they're still not going to find a way to get in. So that's my worry once we do finally expand this thing. Mm. Listen to Sankey, man. It made me think about, well, what happens to the individual conference tournaments? Nothing happens with those. I mean, I know everything's about the money, but, uh, man, if you expand the NCAA tournament, where does that leave the, you know, individual conferences? Mm-hmm. Still the same? Yeah. I mean, if, if people thought they didn't mean a lot now, which judging by what the committee did this year, the SEC tournament meant nothing. There are multiple conference tournaments that meant nothing. I don't know, other than just money. I mean, the value of these conference tournaments is only going to go down, I think, as we, we progress from here. Mm, there you have it. Blake Lovell, host of the At 14 Southeastern. Blake, uh, how much does the loss of Micah Handlognan uh, affect Florida? Well, the thing is, it's like, you know, he's obviously a starter and it's a, it's a big body in the front court and hurts him depth wise. But I'm going to be honest, guys, like based on the draw they got, I don't think it hurt him as much as we would have initially thought just in terms of can they make a run without him? Because I think, again, this is a, a game and a tournament that's all about matchups. I like their matchup against whoever wins tonight, whether it's Boise State or Colorado. And I like their matchup even against the Marquette because let's remember Marquette's, you know, Tyler Kolek, who's been out for I think six games now. He's got an oblique injury or something and, you know, still don't have complete transparency if he's going to be back or not. If he's not, I mean, I think this is a guards game when we start to get into these NCAA tournament games. And Florida's got one of the best guard groups out there. And so I think they can still go far on the strength of that. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, a couple brackets I filled out just trying to figure out how to I want to do this thing. I've had Kentucky and Florida playing in the Sweet 16 because I think that's a real possibility uh, just based on, you know, how good the guards are for both of those teams. And when I look at the region they're in, um, their guard play could both take those teams pretty far. So, What SEC teams do you fear could be, like, most primed for a first round? I, I think Joseph looked yesterday and they were all favorites. Every SEC team I think was a favorite in their game. Who could be, like, such a poor matchup? Maybe they're out after one game. Yeah, I mean, South Carolina to me is the obvious one just because I think, you know, when you have a 6-11 game and you've seen the line be swinging as low as it has, it started as a pick em, I think. South Carolina's favored by one or one and a half now, but I just th- that's low for a 6-11 game. And I think that when you look at just to get the matchup, Oregon's playing well. they got a big man who can really challenge South Carolina just the way Janai Broom did, you know, for Auburn, and that's always proven to be a, a bad matchup. Um, you know, otherwise, I think that's what's interesting about this thing. I don't know that any other SEC team that I look around and say, man, they really got a bad draw in the first round. Like I said, I think Auburn got completely hosed beyond that uh, based on the strength of their resume and and just that East in general is loaded. Uh, But I think everybody's matchup is kind of the more you study it, you don't feel like this is one where you're going to see those multiple SEC teams get upset, uh, even though that seems to be a theme we've seen over the years. Um, I just I think everybody's kind of got a you know even those eight nine games right you got Mississippi State playing Michigan State kind of very similar teams Nebraska and Texas A and M Nebraska couldn't rebound against us three um, you know until A and M will be able to get any rebound they want in that game and so I think it's actually a really favorable draw at least for these early round matchups for a lot of these SEC teams. Mm. Hanging out with Blake Lovell at the Blake Lovell again Southeastern fourteen but uh, follow him on Twitter you can see everything all the time there. Well, Vandy man, uh, too, uh, you know, Madman was asking about Nebraska. Actually, that uh, somebody they have on their team, some Japanese Steph Curry. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> is that, is that, that? Does that guy exist? He he's good. Um, oh. And that's the thing. It's like the, the problem is anytime 
anytime you, you try to pick a Texas A&M game, it's like, which Texas A&M team are we going to get? Are we going to get the team we saw in Nashville this week, or are we going to get the team that was getting blown out by people left and right? Uh, and I think that's the problem and when you kind of try to pick this game with the Aggies. But I think what's at stake and what we got to realize with Texas A&M, and again, this is going to come on the heels of what Nebraska can do because they play pretty well too. They're a really good offensive team, uh, and they do, do have some shooting, like you said, Blaine, but it's like, I mean, A&M, I mean, they, when they, they've now had their back against the wall, like in five straight games, they won every game they had to win to make the tournament. They didn't have to be Florida to make the tournament. We knew, I mean, they were already in at that point, but they won five straight games that were must win. And I think that's what I like about a team like that heading into this kind of field. And so I like the matchup against Nebraska, even though they can shoot it pretty well. Man. So naturally all the Tennessee fans are super excited uh, going into the tournament especially uh, you know with the the way they've played all season except here at the end uh how much pressure do you think is on coach Barnes to make it to at least the uh, sweet 16 yeah i mean there's a lot of pressure i would say for sure because you know uh, any and two right it's like he couldn't have scripted it any better or worse i guess depending on how it unfolds but He's got to play Texas in the second round if if they advance too, and I think that's mm-hmm. like the ultimate. And that's what I said earlier when I was picking my my live bracket. I'm like, if there is a time that Rick Barnes is going to get this voodoo completely off of him, he's going to have to beat his old team to do it. Right? I and love I feel like it. Yes, it's right. It's the ultimate setup, which I do think Texas got a great chance to beat Colorado State. But I just think obviously all the pressure in the world's on him because this to me is a. And I know people are looking at St. Peter's, and you get kind of the flashback of what they think it's Kentucky. I put on Twitter a couple of days ago, this is a completely different St. Peter's team. Uh, all the numbers suggest right. the team is just not anywhere near the team a couple of years ago, even entering the tournament. Um, and so, yeah, I think Tennessee should get to the Sweet 16. If, if they don't get to the Sweet 16, this would be probably one of the bigger disappointments because I think the path is absolutely there to do it. Texas is experienced, but Tennessee's better. And once they get there, I don't, I'll just be honest, I don't love the matchup against Creighton because Creighton has what has been Tennessee's Achilles heel this year, and that is teams with good big men. And that, to me, could be a problem if that is Creighton getting into that spot. Uh, but just getting there, you got to win these first two games, and I, I think they've got a favorable chance to do it. Oh, so you, you have UT losing to Creighton on your bracket. I have them beating them, so I, it just would make me clear. In, in most brackets I've filled out or most. kind of, you know, going back and forth until – I guess I have until tomorrow at 11 to make it official. But I just think Creighton was a bad draw uh, in terms of looking at a team again. When you talk about this year, we've seen the teams Tennessee has struggled against. It has been teams where a big man can kind of play a dominant role. I mean, you look at like Kalkbrenner and what he can do for Creighton. I mean, that is just a – Creighton fits a lot of the, the boxes. If you want to check off a lot of the boxes for teams that can win a national championship, they're fantastic offensively. They're fantastic on the defensive end. Um, you know, they're just really, really strong. And I think the front court is a big reason for that. And so if they're defending, they're a hot shooting team. Tennessee, it's a bad stretch. One of the most experienced teams in the country, one of the tallest teams in the country. Um, so I think Creighton's going to be a popular Final Four pick for a lot of people. I don't love the matchup. But that means Tennessee can't beat. Mm. What are your thoughts on Big Blue Nation there with Kentucky and <laughs> all that surrounds all those, uh, you know, <laughs> things about Cal and everything he does in the tournament? Uh, how do you see uh, them uh, playing in the tournament? Yeah, I mean, Kentucky's a team that, you know, again, they've got all the talent to get there, uh, but there are some concerning stats when you mm-hmm. look at kind of trends in the NCAA tournament and Kentucky. They have gotten better defensively. There's no question about it. The numbers may not suggest it, but I think they've played better defensively as a whole over the past month. But the fact is, they're still a sub-100 defensive team in the country. And teams like that, I don't. I think the number is like they'd only be the second team to ever make the Final Four or something like that with a sub-100 defense, which Miami did it last. Let's not forget, Miami did it recently, of course. But I don't know if that's the trend. That's kind of been the outlier. And so – and that would be the only thing with Kentucky is I want to see them come out and defend because A&M scored 97 on them last week. And a and not the greatest offensive team in the world. And so I just want to see them play defense. If they play defense, they're going to be fine. Like I said, I'm not saying Kentucky's going to lose to Oakland the first round, but if you're looking for a team that can make it interesting against the Kentucky, Oakland is very experienced. They've got a fantastic big man in Trey Townsend uh, who I think could give Kentucky a little bit of trouble. 
But beyond that, if Kentucky defends, if they guard, they can absolutely win the South because I think it's wide open. If Houston has some injuries, even though I picked them to win the championship an hour ago, uh, they've got some injuries that could prevent them from getting there. And I like that bottom part of the bracket. Like I said, if you could get a Kentucky-Florida matchup in the Sweet 16. So I think the Cats still have the best path to the Final Four of any SEC team, but they got to defend. That's what it comes down to. Got you. Last question for me is, why are schools or teams opting out of the NIT? Because at this point, I don't know that there's a lot of value. I know Tom Crean went on a rant about, you know, wanting to give players an opportunity, the chance to play. But with the transfer portal nonsense that's going on right now in terms of, like, the dates and how it's basically open, I mean, how many players have transferred in the past 48 hours since this thing opened up, I think you have a situation where, especially if you're like an SEC team, what is the value of playing in the NIT if you're expecting to lose players or if you know you've kind of got to rebuild your roster and go out and go get transfers and all this? Hey, I mean, there are going to be, you know, Ole Miss opted out. They didn't want to play. Um, I'm not going to sit there and just knock Chris Beard and Ole Miss for that if he met with his team and he met with his seniors, grad guys, and said, hey, do you guys want to play or do you not want to play? If there are guys who are like, you know what, I'm just not feeling it, not into it, we can have that discussion, you know, another day in terms of whether they should or shouldn't want to play. But if they don't want to play, why waste your time? Because I think the NIT has just kind of become, especially now that they've changed the rules, right, where the automatic qualifiers and other conference tournaments don't get in. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a terrible move. Yes. And now I think they're going to pay for it because you're just going to have teams opting out because of the way the transfer portal works. And the coaches want to get a head start on it. So. Got you. Like level. Blake, we appreciate you giving us a head start on the NCAA tournament, man. Uh, I like 20 seconds on the way out. How many teams will get off a bus at an arena total just in this whole bracket of when it starts out of 64 can actually win this tournament this year? It seems like a few. I would say as many as 10, um, which is probably as high of a number as I've said before. I think oh. that top two seeds in multiple brackets, even the fours, fives, there, there's a lot of good teams here, guys. All right. Man, quick and precise, as many as 10. Thank you, man. Uh, follow Blake for all the latest at the Blake level, and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the tournament. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, yes, sir. Too. Always. Great catching up with Blake <laughs> level. All right. Due to some forecasting and some uh, uh, early exits for us this week based on basketball broadcasting, we got to call our shot a little bit early. Let's call some shots when we come back. Oh. Hey, and for everybody out there, you want to call an NCAA shot? Because Blaine's already hinted at his, maybe a local team making a long, long run in the tournament. Uh, 615-737-1045. Your team, first week into the tournament, you want to call the whole thing. Uh, FNM Bank Chat is open. Tweet us at Blaine and Mickey. By the way, follow us there. Also on Insta at Blaine and Mickey. But it is uh, time to call some shots next. Have you noticed how unreliable things have become these days? Like when someone tells you it'll be ready at 4 p.m. and it's not? People are really tired of that stuff. So if you've had this unreliable vehicle repair shops, come on over to Eurofix. Eurofix turns unreliable into reliable, and Eurofix has your vehicle ready when it's really ready so you don't have to stand around waiting all freaking day. And Eurofix repairs all European cars with quality that beats the dealer and without the dealer pricing. And that's because dealer repair shops are designed to pay virtually all of the dealership's overhead. And that's a lot of moolah money, by the way. And why would you want to pay for that? Well, a Eurofix Reliable also means three-year nationwide warranty plus a free loan of car with every repair appointment. So make sure you call ahead as sooner than later as loan of cars are very popular. So if you're tired of the unreliable repair shops, come on over to Reliable and that'll be Eurofix. Family owned for 24 years. And all you have to do is just give them a call at 844-EUROFIX. That's right, 844-EUROFIX, or you can visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. But always tell them, Blaine, Sidra.
Blaine and Mickey yeah, on Wednesday, yeah. hump day. Calling our shot a little bit early this week. Uh, this basketball season brought to you by Chattanooga Whiskey, named the 2023 Craft Producer of the Year by Whiskey Magazine. The perfect lineup for your hoops viewing. Chattanooga Whiskey 91, Cask 111 and 99, rye available at your local retailer. The perfect weekend and the perfect basketball tournament deserve the perfect pour. Chattanooga Whiskey available at your local retail store. We'll take these calls first. Let's oh, get yeah. some calls in. Remember, yeah. what what did Blake Lovell tell us? Tomorrow at 11, all bets are off. Well, all bets got to be in because that's when everything starts. Oh, I think he said tomorrow at 11. That, so this is your last chance to call these tournament shots and say what your team is going to do, good or bad. For instance, I can't even read the guy's name in the chat because it's electric blue font. My shot is BYU makes the Elite Eight. Ooh. Can you read that? Yeah, that is uh, Benny Boy 0430. All I see is a bright blue blur on this uh, particular monitor here. It's having trouble processing it? that. It's the last comment right now on the uh, comment stream. Where you makes it Elite Eight. Kyle in Springfield. Benny Boy. Get your shot, man. Courtesy of the good folks at Chattanooga Whiskey. Drink responsibly. What's going on? What's going on, boys? You I tell think us. I might have the outlandish shot of the week. Do it. None of the number one seeds make it to week two. <laughs> Ooh, what? What's your feeling on this? Week, week I mean, two, that, that's or, you, or round two. H Town, what are you seeing here? I'm thinking they all just got crappy matchups in the round of 32 if certain teams win. Oh, man. I think AM can win against uh, Houston, I believe. No. Mississippi State versus North Carolina. And then. Um, Oh, we got Purdue. I don't remember who they got to play. They would get uh, Utah State, who's an unbelievable story this year, or TCU. TCU. Okay. But I, I don't think any of the number ones make it. And I think one of my boys told me that that has never happened. Okay. Oh. Boy, if so this when happens, five hundred dollars richer. Oh, five hundred dollars richer. I'll be very happy. Kyle, you better call back in if this actually happens. Hundred percent. I, I, Man, I wish y'all. I wish y'all could have seen my face when he said that. I was genuinely shocked. It, it, I hope it boy. happens, just for the chaos. I hope it happens. Yeah. Well, I, mean, maybe, well, I, I root for straight team, chaos. Team I mean, my chaos. team never makes it. I'm I'm only chaos. I'm chaos only. Mm-hmm. Maybe Trey in Nashville has a chaos scenario in his shot. What's hey, up, chaos. Trey? What's going on, my guys? Hey, hey, chilling, chilling. Hey, man, I w- I just wanted to say, like, I believe. There will be three upsets in the tournament. I say that because a lot of these smaller level schools, you know, they're running three guards. Mm -hmm. Like, all of them can shoot, you know. So if you get a smaller level school playing up against a top tier school and their guards not matching up with the smaller level schools, then, you know, they're going to lose. You know, so I think, you know, guard play is going to take on a whole different level (laughs) in this tournament, you know, and a lot of big, a few big schools are going to be put out. You know, Tennessee, you know, they they playing some boys, man, that can shoot the ball. So, you know, if they keep their head in it, I I believe they can win. But I believe there's going to be three upsets coming up. Mm -hmm. And y'all have a good day, brother. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Trey. Ray said he's shooting threes, a guard play. <laughs> I mean, guard play can win you a lot of games, yeah. that's for sure. What I mean, Tennessee, they have a lot of guards or who can be perimeter players what? who handle the rock. That's what I'm saying. If they get on a little run, I think they're going to be tough. And they, they get, they're deep. Uh, Nebraska, Matt, I have MSU winning a couple. He didn't say which one, although it looks like they're talking about Mississippi State. Um uh, Crab Core King says in the FNM Bank chat, uh, CCK, Mississippi State don't even make it out of the first round. <laughs> and he says, I'm calling my shot. Purdue beats Illinois in a Big Ten National Championship final. Ooh. Big Ten homerism. You don't see a lot of that around here. Ill- Illinois is an interesting team. Yeah. I, they're in a very tough region with UConn, Auburn, Iowa State. Uh, I've got them. BYU. I've got them going to the Elite Eight, losing to UConn. I have them. Um... Going to the Sweet 16 and losing to Iowa State. Yeah, that game was real interesting to me. That's a good one. Yeah, 
Yeah, they could go. They're much better than I thought. I'm like, oh, Illinois, you're fighting a line? Nah. They haven't been good since they had Nick Anderson and crew. All Mar- right. Marcus Liberty in those dudes. Oh, my gosh. The days of big those? shorts. Oh, oh, man. Marcus Liberty, man. They had some dudes back oh, then. Kendall Gill. Kendall Gill. I was Yo, just like, oh, man. Kendall Gill was so smooth. They have been the same since then, man. Boy. It was like, whoa. Those were some good times. All right. Phone lines are ringing. You want to call a shot? We've got to call ours. We'll do ours to start the second hour of the show. Again, your last chance. To call it, we've already had a no number one seed makes it out of the out of the first weekend. Wow. So that's his biggest shot, but you got one to match it. You want to brag on your team. You want to fear what's going to happen to your team. 615-737-1045. Titans draft. All right, this is the best time of year if you're a basketball fan because there's no other time of the year like this time of the year. When it comes to hair loss, though, it doesn't care what time of year it is. Hair just decides to go when it decides to go. But great news for you is it doesn't matter what season you decide to change it, you can change it with PAI with WeGrowHair.com. They are waiting on your call to get you in and get you a game plan to get your own hair growing back on your head. Matter of fact, they got the best process in the business, this uh, multi-unit hair grafting procedure. It's a trademark procedure. It gives you more hair in one procedure. It saves you time and money. Now, think about this. One day of your life, trade it for, and it's not even the whole day, to get your hair growing back on your head for the rest of your life. An unbelievable procedure. They can explain it. Maybe you need another way to do it. Guess what? They've got other options as well, depending on where you are in your hair loss journey, but they can't help you if you don't call and the call is free and the first appointment is free. So call today and get the free appointment and get your game plan and get it done with PAI Medical Group. WeGrowHair.com, 615-376-6010. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer. You close in as little as 21 days. No home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing.
Good afternoon. It is 1.59. I am Joseph Bonanno in the NFL. The competition committee has proposed several new rule changes in the NFL. Two most notable are the revamped kickoff that resembles the alignment used in the XFL during the 2020 and 2023 seasons, as well as a 15-yard and automatic first down penalty for the use of the hip drop tackle by defenders. Another NFL news, Detroit Lions and former Tennessee Vol defensive back Cam Sutton has a warrant out for his arrest for an alleged involvement in a domestic violence battery case. Police in Florida have been searching for Sutton, but have not been able to locate him at this time. In SEC college football news, the SEC is expected to stick with the eight-game conference schedule for 2025, according to 24-7 Sports. Uh, The men's NCAA tournament first four continues tonight as Grambling and Montana State battle for the 16th seeded at 5.40 p.m. Uh, That will give them a chance to face one seed Purdue and then Colorado and Boise State battle for the 10 seed at 8 10 p.m. that will give them a chance to face Florida you can hear both those games right here on the zone right after 3HL tonight the women's tournament gets underway tonight as well for the first four and Vanderbilt will battle Columbia for the 12 seed in region three and 8 p.m. tip off on ESPNU for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit USSTN.com breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols This is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone, uh, calling some shots. Got NCAA basketball rolling in the next couple of days. So instead of Friday, we called our shot, got some phone calls in the final segment of the first hour. Uh, I know phone lines were ringing. You want to jump back on the lines. Now the commercial break is over, 615-737-1045. Uh, here's another one. WKU beats Creighton and makes it to the Elite Eight. That would be something. Oh, WKU. That's the uh, name that I can't read for some reason on this monitor it's not reading colors very well oh. uh but anyway we're taking your your call shots and we got to give ours too 615-737-1045 fnm bank chat if you're watching uh zone tv you can drop it in there as well and we will see it or tweet us at blaine and <laughs> mickey hey you kind of already hinted at yours when you filled out your bracket oh yeah 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 i have something that sort of supports that oh. almost Oh, man, help me out I, I, because I'm looking like a homer. But I, I really believe this. If they bust through the snide, Barnes get the, you know, <laughs> the deal off his back and they break through the Sweet 16, man, I think then they're just going to play really loose. So, man, I, I'm thinking UT can uh, – had U, in UNC and UT making it to the <coughs> championship. I, I said yesterday UNC, but I think UT is going to get revenge and win it, win it all. I mean, it's going to be a spectacular. Just think how crazy the state of Tennessee would be if the Vols – Freaking won the national championship in basketball. I don't know if I'll I, come in to work the next day. Oh, uh, no, no. Matter of fact, I don't think we will be on air. <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> no, we will be on air because this is the perfect time to be on air. But it will the be. The tower might fall crazy. over. Crazy. Like, oh, man, this place will go bonkers, man. It, it, man, wow. That would be fantastic. I mean, I'd be so elated, not only for the team and the university, but for Coach Barnes, man. Man, Would wow. That- I, if I was him, I'd be like, I think I may retire now. <laughs> Pull a Saban. Hey, huh? seriously. Yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't get any better. Hey, man, anything from here, man, I've been blessed for a long time. Would that end officially battered Vol syndrome if they won the national championship in basketball? Would battered Vol syndrome end right there? No. No? No. No. What? What? It, that, Why is that? That is a thing that is built into our blood <laughs> and <laughs> okay. it will never, what? ever built cease to exist. Our, oh, our blood? What does that mean? Okay. We're born with it. Why? It's just, it's just the, it's just. Nas- the there's fans, some man. scar National tissue chip. here. Yeah, going yeah, on. What's going on? Yeah, it's we're it's just, we're, you're born with it. You're a Vol fan. You're born with it. As soon as you become a Vol fan, you have it. <laughs> well, that, it's like a that's not a way to live life, man. It's gonna be real short. <laughs> okay, here we you go. We can celebrate the little things. Here, here's okay. here's something that supports Blaine. Almost. Uh oh. This is you're right there. So when right. I was not close looking at the tournament. 20 of the last 25 national champions. This is since 1998. Vol fans know 1998 well. Have entered the tourney ranked number six overall in Ken Palm. Number six overall in, in, in the Ken Palm ratings. 
22 of 25 have, this is easy. You just look and see every year who's in the top six. And 22 of the last 25 of those teams ha- have won it all. Those teams in the top six. So every year that's only five, right? Tennessee is seven. Oh, no! Seven. They're close. They five. No, they're close. You know who the only SEC team is that fits this criteria? Don't say Kentucky. It's not Kentucky. Alabama. No, it's the guy we all like so well. Pearl. Um, Pearl. Bruce Pearl. So it's UConn, Houston, Purdue, Auburn is four, Arizona five, Iowa State is number six. They're the six teams. They're the top six in Ken Palm right now. Number seven is Tennessee. Number eight is Duke. Number nine is North Carolina. And who were we talking about in the last segment? Number 10 is Illinois. Number 11 is Creighton. Oh, and they got to play them, hopefully. But like Bama's 13, uh, Kentucky is 21. That's uh, the next SEC team. Then mm. Florida's 29. Good Mississippi info. State's 31. Wow. So Tennessee is just outside the top six. I mean, that was – we got into this. It may not have been with Blake Lovell, but we had a basketball person on, and we were talking about this probably a month ago. Uh-huh. And whoever it was said, Tennessee's like in the top 20 right now in Kim Palm, defense and, and offense. offense. Mm-hmm. Not just defense, where they always are, and offense. So all these Kim Palm-ish things <laughs> – Point to them having a nice run in the tournament. They're just outside the top six, and 22 of the last 25 winners have come from the top six Ken Palm teams. Dang, that's a heck of a stat there. That's and that's one of those things where stats don't tell the whole story, but that's a heck of a story for six teams every year that one of them wins it. Yes. Wow. Let's get Carlos checking in all the way from New Jersey. I can't wait to hear a New Jersey shot. What's up, Carlos? Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everything? Good, Good man. Cherry Hill, man. Cherry Hill. Hey, look. First and foremost, uh, big Houston Oilers fan. Ooh. Back with Earl Campbell, Rob Ooh. Carpenter, Dan Passerini. That was my time. So oh, I am wow. still a Titans fan. I'm still follow through. But I'm not calling about those boys. I'm calling about my St. Peter's Peacocks. Two times alum. Listen, if we win this game, we're giant killers forever. Wow. How confident are you? Like, what is their style of play? Break us. Break them down. It, it, Small ball, and 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 okay. you know, I think I think you mentioned it. You know, someone mentioned it earlier. Three three guard rotation, mm-hmm. and that's what it's going to be. You know, uh, we, we're not going to be able to pound it inside with the big guys, but you know, sneaky little guards getting through, and all it takes is one one mishap, and that's it. Yeah. We're going through the same way we did with Kentucky. You know, everyone didn't think that we were going to make it, but here we are. You know what I mean? It's, and and we're back again. So listen, like I thought about Kentucky, didn't think we were going to win it. But it happened. Same thing with now with Tennessee. If we can pull this game off, we become the giant killers forever. <laughs> well, Middle Tennessee might have something to say about that because they're talking a whole lot this year. I've seen Middle fans bringing up their flashbacks from when they beat Miss, uh, when they beat Michigan State. That's a pretty good giant killing right there. Yeah. That's I, one for my, the ages. My entire high school was watching that game because <laughs> it was right after school let out, and they had it like up on because my school was right across the street from MTSU, so we had it up on a project oh. like on a projector, and we were watching that game. I remember because I remember sitting in my dad's classroom with that game up and just like freaking out, like I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, oh, Rick Insel, man, that that hey that team was loaded yeah loaded they were so much fun to watch yeah, yeah. we got Emmett jones here real quick before we go to the lines uh james madison beats wisconsin it's his shot did i say rick ensel yeah i think so yeah, yeah. well he's doing great too yeah. <laughs> i meant kermit davis yeah uh i also met jason in the borough jason in the borough probably watched that game what's up jason hey guys you got good, afternoon good afternoon to you good afternoon to man. you hey i just wanted to say man um, I'm, I'm go balls first of all, but uh, I just I don't know this this balls this battered ball syndrome. Like y'all need to quit this stuff. Quit bad. putting it into existence. Quit putting it into existence, man. Just y'all making it sound like we can't. Like not it, me, it, not me. That's bananas. It's that's it's bananas. Me. It's me. <laughs> that I is the battered ball here. He's doing it. That's gotta go, man. That's gotta go. You're you Tim putting bad juju on us. Yeah, it's gotta I go. Know. You know, but, I'm, um, I'm superstitious. I definitely believe in that. My call, my call, my shot. Uh, I really wanted to say Tennessee, but uh, I just see UConn taking it again this year uh, as a repeat. But my shot is there's only going to be one person or one team in the Final Four as the number one, which is UConn. Anybody else is going to be out of the number one uh, seeds. Ooh, okay. 
Man, it, it's hard to pick against UConn. I mean, it is. They're just so well-rounded. It's so lame to bet chalk, but oh my, oh my gosh. I mean, they're so good. Uh, I, I got two shots. Bananas, you, you go, and then I'll give, yeah. and then I'll give mine too. Then right. if we have time, we'll take Ryan's call. I don't know if it's a shot or not. We'll I've got, take... I've got three major upsets happening Whoa. Uh, in, in this first weekend. Uh, I've got New Mexico, yeah. who a lot of people are high on. They're playing Clemson first. I've got them going all the way, all the way to the Sweet Sixteen, beating Clemson and then beating Baylor in the round of thirty-two. Oh, uh, I'm really high on James Madison. I mean, they've only lost three games this season. I know they don't play like the the same schedule like a Tennessee does or uh, like that. But Mickey, I think you convinced me just talking about them beating your Arkansas State. Uh, in the Sun Belt Championship, who they beat? Uh, they they beat Michigan State, and they did beat Michigan yeah. State as well. So uh, I, I'm really high on James Madison. I think they beat Wisconsin. I think they beat Duke, and they get to the Sweet 16. And then NC State. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that run they went on in the yeah. ACC tournament, but that's going to carry over for me. Uh, I've got them uh, beating uh, Texas Tech. I've got them beating Kentucky, and then eventually losing to Marquette State. Again, in the Sweet 16. And then another one for fun. They're not getting to the Sweet 16, but Sanford is beating Kansas uh, because uh, mm-hmm. Kansas's star player, That's Kevin McCuller Jr., will not be playing in the NCAA tournament. Have they said why, though? I saw that. I, I, I didn't see why. I no, I, I just saw that he's he's not going to be there. They're not a great team. Uh, they haven't been this year. They haven't been the Kansas of old. Um, they lost Hunter Dickinson. Uh, or no, they got Hunter Dickinson, uh, but hasn't really help them much. Uh, so I think they're they're on upset watch in the first round of the tournament. Well, I have Grand Canyon beating St. Mary's. Oh, the that fighting guy? Bryce Drews. Yeah, the Bryce Drews. I like Bryce Drew, man. Wow, I'm I, so disappointed in everybody. It, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And, and that's one of those things, like, it can't get any worse. <laughs> it was pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Now you got to start all over again. Oh. Uh, I think James Madison is going to win two games in the tournament. That was one of mine. I think James Madison will win two. Uh, the caller was talking about guard play and how they can shoot you out of the gym. They're like a top 10 scoring team in the nation, and they're efficient shooting the three, and um, they just throw a lot at you, James Madison. I know because I personally got to see my team get a lot thrown at them by them twice uh, this year. So I think James Madison can win two games. Here's my other one, and this is a football one. So Marvin Harrison Jr. today was Ohio State's pro day, and he did nothing. Nothing. I think that's going to be the blueprint for other people like him who are a top of the top of the top pick, and they're like, I'm not going to train for track three months to run a slow 40 and you know, lose myself being a top five pick. I'm not doing it. My shot is I think there'll be more of these top of the – like if you're Blaine from Ball pick. State or Mickey from Arkansas State, you're going to do everything. You get run, you're going to do it all. But I think the top of the top guys will be like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing any of this stuff. And Caleb Williams didn't do anything at the combine. He threw today, though, because yeah, we saw him on TV. Awesome, yeah. um, Had Keenan Allen in attendance. But I'm his future teammate. Ah, that's true. But when guys started opting out of, you know, the Poolan Weed Whacker Bowl and people lost their mind and we were like, eh, this is probably going to start happening more. Oh, yeah. You know, guys got to protect their interest. I never fault a kid for doing that. I think there's going to be, not a lot, but I think there'll be top guys at positions who say, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'll interview. You can weigh me. That's it. So I know you're still going to take me up high. We'll see. But I, I think I think people will follow his lead. Uh, all right, let's. We, we got two more shot calls. Let's try to squeeze them in, and then we'll have Jordan and Janney on. Joe and Bowling Green up next on Blaine and Mickey. Hello, Joe. Hey guys, how you doing? Good, great. Good. Listen, uh, don't sleep on St. Mary's. Um, yeah. Um, I've watched them beat Gonzaga. They really play defense, and they've got a guard named Aiden Mahaney, and he was freshman of the year last year. He is sort of the Reed Shepherd. Of that uh, conference. Mm, Whoa, nice the, one. Nice the dude, the dude can create his own shot. Uh, they play really good defense. They've got a big, strong center. Uh, so I wouldn't. Everybody's picking Grand Canyon. I'm going to lean the other way on that one. And well, I've they're ranked good higher good. five. You know, St. Mary's is five. Grand Canyon's twelve. Yeah, but a lot of people are picking Grand Canyon. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, they are. No, uh, my, me, myself included. And I've got a trivia question for you guys. There's one school that is playing in their home state. And I'll give you a, a hint. 
It's a school that play, seems to play every NCAA game in their home state. Can you name that school? <sighs> Normally I would say North Carolina, but they're not in their home state. No, they, they are, yes. Uh, North they, Carolina. <laughs> Am I right? Right. Mickey, there have been years where they played the first and second rounds in North Carolina. Carolina. It's the darndest thing I've ever yeah. seen. And people are, you know, just rave about their record in the NCAA tournament. Well, there's a reason. They're playing four games in their own state. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Goodwin, man, thanks for calling. That's the first one I thought of because it seems yeah. like they always play in Greensboro or, or Charlotte or yeah. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a nice shot, though. St. Mary's, man. Yeah. Usually, doesn't the 5 and 12 matchup, uh, which is the St. Mary's uh, that he's talking about uh, with Grand Canyon, that's where a lot of upsets usually are at in the 5 12 matchups. Yes. And over, 11 over the history been, of the bracket. Uh, 12 for sure. The 12 5 mm-hmm. is the historically the upset. I don't know what the magic is there, but 11s have been winning too. Yeah. So, but 12 5 right. is where the dang magic happens. Yeah. For sure. That's why I picked JMU, James Madison. They're my twelve. They're my twelve mm-hmm. five. Yep, they're the only Again, other side over here. Yeah, they can shoot you out of the building, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And well, I, I, I've just I've seen them do it. All right, we got time to take one more. Jeff in Nashville, March Madness <laughs> shot calling. What's going on? Hey, what it do? What you got, man? What'd it do Jeff? Hey, uh, I just want to say I got I, I do the I do the the, the ESPN app or the ESPN. Uh, Online app where you can do like 25, uh, 25 of those uh, tournament brackets. I do 25 every year. Wow. And surely, surely, God, I want to get at least one of them right. But now it's just about getting all the other ones right within that bracket. That way I can win the million. Well, Jeff, if it happens, man, we expect you to take us to lunch or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I probably sure will. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks Good for luck. the call. All right, uh, Jordan dejani has got to join us next. He's waiting for your call. Uh, we'll talk all things NFL and free agency, and maybe he'll know the latest on Legereus Need and all that coming up next on Blaine and Mickey, powered by all four seasons garage doors. Man, you start talking about the big tournament in March, upsets, buzzer beaters, nothing compares to it. It's just the best, like Tyus Edney going coast to coast, or we're talking about Bryce Drew, remember that miracle shot that he hit, sent him to basketball immortality. Sometimes, though, you and your team are on the other side of those moments, the wrong side. That's why FanDuel is going to give everybody a no-sweat first bet from now until March 20th, which last time I checked is today. Doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or if you already got an account, you're going to get bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, you can even use your no-sweat bet on a college basketball parlay, like maybe the Vols points over and the game points over and Tennessee to cover in that game because I think they can do all those things. So why don't you download the FanDuel Sportsbook app if you don't already have it by going to FanDuel.com slash Mickey and make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. You'd have to be 21 and up, though, present in Tennessee. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets expire seven days after receipt. Max refund is $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms of sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call Tennessee redlining 1-800-889-9789.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Jordan and Janney making his return, his triumphant return this week. We missed you last week, J.D. Man, good to have you back. I'm back. What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, not the most ideal time to take a vacation. CBS Sports is not happy with me. Oh. But went out west and went skiing, you know, took some falls, got banged up, could not pass a physical if any NFL team wanted to sign me right now. <laughs> but then I got stuck in the mountains in a blizzard. I was out what? there directing tow trucks, trying to tow 18 wheelers on a mountain. I was stranded in Colorado for over a week. I just got back on Sunday. So, yeah, never going on vacation again. Terrible idea, but I appreciate you guys giving me the week off so I could do some tequila shooters on a ski lift. Oh, uh, wow. Mm. Well, I'm just glad you made it out alive, man. Sounds like you almost lived the shining up so there. Are you a big skier, or you, this is your first time, or you just been a handful of times? What's it's it's kind of funny. My dad is a really big skier, and as a kid, uh, he took me probably every winter, really. So I grew up skiing. I was pretty decent, uh, but this was the first time in 14 years I got Ooh. back out on the snow. So okay. I actually did okay. I was a little impressed that I wasn't terrible. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I got a little overly aggressive and tried to go fast down the mountain. That was not a smart idea. Did you panic? No, I'm saying that from experience. I got to going so fast on a big hill uh, when I was going. I, I, I basically I, I, I ran into a tree, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's why I'm asking because oh, I panicked because I was going woo woo and I was like, uh oh, I think I'm going a little faster oh, no. than I want to. Come and on. So I tried the old school elementary novice skier stop, and it was like. Uh-uh, that's not working with the go at an angle with your toes. It was like, you got to turn sideways, bro, or you're going to run into this tree. <laughs> yeah, you got a pizza to slow down, right? So yeah. it's funny you ask that question because, you know, I was confident when I was going fast, but then you have that that, that minute, that, that millisecond of panic. <laughs> When you yes, start to lose control, awesome. and the yeah, next the that. next thing you know, you're rolling on the ground, and you hear people above you on the ski lifts laughing at you. So yeah, I had that millisecond of panic every time I I lost control because when I lost control, yeah, I, I definitely lost control. Yeah, I, I Jordan and Janney, uh, I don't know if the Titans lost here. control in free agency, but they signed a bunch of guys and spent some money. Are oh you my. panicked about that, or do you feel good about it? <laughs> No, I'm not panicked at all. I, I feel great. I, and listen, I understand that there's work to be done on the defensive side of the ball. I'm going to start by saying that. Everyone agrees with that. But I'm not panicking when it comes to uh, the additions to come. I mean, we still have the draft, which is where real – teams are built in my opinion but offensively how can you not be excited I mean Tennessee went out there and got a new wide receiver in Calvin Ridley someone we talked about actually the last time I was on your show mm -hmm. and I, I brought up you know I didn't know if Ridley was going to be a target uh, for Callahan and Rain Carthon at free agency given that he was 29 years old he would come expensive but th they went out there and got him and I applaud the front office for doing that because I have faith in Callahan when it comes to him setting up his own offense, the personnel he wants in that scheme. And Calvin really is clearly someone they wanted in that scheme. So I applaud them for going out and getting him. I kind of found his comments about leaving Jacksonville a little bit interesting, right? He, he brought up being treated like a grown man as an attractive thing. So I went on the radio in Jacksonville this morning and I asked the host, were you guys not treating Calvin Ridley like a grown man? Because now he's catching passes for the enemy. So obviously excited about that signing. Did not anticipate Tennessee going out and, and being aggressive, trying to find their Derrick Henry replacement in Tony Pollard. Three years, $7 million a year, potential out in 2025. Um, he's obviously a versatile pass catcher. I think he's someone who makes life easier for young Will Levis, both on the ground and through the air as a pass catcher. Lloyd Cushenberry, I mean, he set records among centers financially and signing bonus full guaranteed money, first year cash. Uh, but hopefully they've got their quote unquote Ben Jones of the future. So offensively, I'm definitely optimistic and excited for what the Titans are building. Talking all things NFL with our man from CBS Sports, Jordan Ski Lodge DeJenny. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. No panicker. But uh someone who's not panicking is Harrison uh, you know, Jr. And, and Mickey brought this up and, I, and it's an interesting question is uh you know, when you start seeing trends of top five, maybe even top ten picks, maybe not ever doing a workout, whether it's at the combine or even their own personal pro day at their school? Yes, yes. I absolutely think that this is a legitimate trend that you're going to see more of because – 
I think, in fact, Marvin Harrison Jr., he might be the number one overall player in the draft, according to CBS Sports prospect rankings. And when you're the top player at your position, arguably the top player in the draft, you know that you're going to go historically high. Um, you could make the argument, what's the point of going out there and um, participating in the combine? We've obviously seen a lot of players opt out of the combine, but they usually go to your their pro days and text. And this time we have Marvin Harrison Jr. not even doing that. And in fact, he didn't even speak to reporters at the combine as well, which was a little different. Now, it, it's interesting because we've seen this narrative start to build over the past week that Neighbors is the new number one wide receiver on some teams' draft boards. I don't know how true that is. If you go look at Vegas, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is still the heavy favorite to be the first receiver off the, off the board. I would say he's probably my wide receiver one as well. I don't think that him opting out of all these events is going to be something that hurts his stock. And to answer your question, yes, I absolutely think that this is a trend that is going to continue in the future. Well, there's still uh, some uh, free agents out there at the cornerback positions. Want to get your thoughts on what you think of these veteran guys who were elite at, at some point in time, but now they're just, you know, good starters in the NFL. And Xavier and Howard and Tredavious White and guys like that. Uh, what do you think uh, about those guys and uh, what would be their price tag, you think, if they sign with the team? So I would love either of those guys on the Tennessee Titans, but of course it really comes down to contract and it comes to market as well. And then playing premier positions and obviously playing very well for a number of years, they're, in my opinion, they're going to have a market. So it's going to come down to money and it's going to come down to fit. It's going to come down to scheme. And I think I saw a report that Tredavious White is going to be visiting Tennessee. He's got some injury history as well. Um, but, you know, I think that he would be a fit with Denard Wilson. I think that the defensive coordinator, the first year defensive coordinator, could have some fun play calling with him. Now, as for his contract, that's where it gets really tough for me to predict because I don't know if a guy like this and if he has a, let's call it a robust market, if he's going to sign a one-year prove-it deal worth a handful of million of dollars or he's going to get a multi-year deal um, with less guaranteed money. That's where it gets really hard for me to predict what that what's going to happen with that. And what's going to dictate that is, again, how many teams are interested in him. And I'm, 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 the other thing I'm kind of thinking about is which one of these players um, is going to have more of a market. And I'm going ex- to I'm going to guess it's Xavier Howard who's going to have more suitors. So that is certainly one of the more interesting storylines to pay attention to as we get to the second wave of free agency. One more cornerback question. That is uh, Ladarius Sneed. Uh, a lot of conversations about the Colts and the Titans and different teams. You're hearing about rumors uh, who are interested in them, but uh, maybe his asking price is too much as far as contract. Uh, what have you heard or things is going to happen with, uh, with Sneed? Will he end up just staying at Kansas City or will he end up somewhere else? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I feel like if you're someone who has a line directly to the Tennessee Titans front office or, or the front office of the Indianapolis Colts, and you ask them, are you guys talking about Legereus Sneed? They're probably going to deny it because they're in the midst of negotiations. But uh, according to SI.com, the Titans and the Colts at least previously have expressed interest in Legereus Sneed, and I guarantee that there's a number of other teams as well. Now, according to that report from SI.com, it's not necessarily the trade compensation that's going to go the the Kansas City Chiefs way that's holding up negotiations. It's the second part of that. It's going to be the money that Legereus Sneed feels like he wants, and that's something that I've been looking over for the past few days, let's call it. I mean, if he plays on the tag and remains in Kansas City, he'd make a fully guaranteed $19.8 million. Jalen Johnson, if you were a member of the Chicago Bears, was franchise tag, but but he reached a, an extension with Chicago, um, and that new contract is $76 million and carries an AAV of $19 million. So he's somewhere in the top 10 there, and according to reports, Legereus Need wants more than that, right? He wants to get into that top five, top four, whatever it may be. And that's a really tough decision that – an interested franchise is going to have to make not only giving up that trade compensation, but giving up a big contract for a, a boundary cornerback and someone, of course, who you guys have talked about it on your show, who might have some kind of concerns with a knee injury as well. And we don't really have specifics on what that knee issue may be. So I think there's a reality where Legereus Need actually ends up playing on the tag in Kansas City. I don't know yet how likely that is. And he, he could cost him some money if he ends up getting hurt or re-injuring that knee or what have you. Um, so this is going to be an interesting storyline to follow. I feel like if he knocks down his asking price just to peg, maybe a deal comes to fruition. But again, we'll see what happens with that. Jordan Dezani, NFL writer for CBS Sports. 
You surprised Fields got traded for a six? I know it could become a fourth, but I mean, they also picked up Russell Wilson for next to nothing, but six round pick. Yeah, so my initial guess was actually a conditional third, and they, I guess they're getting what you could call a conditional fourth. fourth. Now, if yeah. those conditions are met, of course, is, is remains to be seen. But I'm not that surprised, and the reason is is because they traded him at the wrong time. There was two ideal times to trade Justin Fields, in my opinion. One was before the whole uh, free agency started, when the quarterback chairs started going, right? The other was actually maybe day two of the NFL draft in the future because we know we're going to see some movement with the, with the Las Vegas Raiders, maybe the Minnesota Vikings, other teams attempting to move up in the first round for their quarterback or maybe stay put, move down in the first round for their quarterback. But the bottom line is that this is a game of musical chairs, and there is undoubtedly going to be at least one team that does not get the rookie quarterback they want. So Justin Fields could have a market that sparks up at day two of the NFL draft. And maybe, just maybe, Chicago could have gotten better compensation if they held on a little bit longer. So this was the, the, the juncture where I would not have traded Justin Fields. But I can play devil's advocate with myself. The Bears have really made it clear that they wanted to put Justin Fields in the spot where he wanted to be, the spot where he could find some level of success. They wanted to do right by Justin Fields. And by sending him to Pittsburgh, that's apparently where he wanted to go. Uh, do the 49ers need to fire some accountants? I know you wrote about this, but they mm. lost a draft pick over accounting issues. Mm. Yeah, how about that? And, and it's funny because I wrote about this saying, you know, the 49ers are the kings of the draft picks, right? They, they're so yep. good at getting those compensatory picks. And now they're going to have a fourth rounder, I think it's this year, move back all the way behind the compensatory picks. And then a fifth rounder, they're forfeiting in 2025. So, yeah, I, I know crazy things happen in the NFL all the time, but I don't remember seeing something like this. And the, the main point about this and the thing that you need to know is that the 49ers were not trying to cheat. They remained under the cap number the entire time. But if they didn't, then that would be a significant um, significant problem and that there would be a bigger punishment handed down. But, yeah, pretty interesting story coming down and. You know, there's been some notable players that have been drafted in the fifth round, and the 49ers will not have the opportunity to, to take a player in 2025 in that, that round. Hanging out with Jordan DeJani, CBS Sports, at Jordan DeJani on Twitter, also known as X. Well, Jordan, uh, we just watched uh, Caleb Williams uh, doing his uh, USC uh, workout, man. But I, I started thinking about, man, he's got some weapons there with Swift at running back, uh, DJ Moore, Cole Komet at tight end, Everett they signed as a tight end, as well as Keenan Allen in the trade uh, so I'm just interested, how's the offensive line? Because if the offensive line's intact, man, he could get up to speed pretty quick offensively. Yeah, Darnell Wright, Nate Davis, Tevin Jenkins, Braxton Davis. Jones are on that offensive line. I mean, the thing is, when that offensive line was healthy, it was actually pretty decent. But the problem was they struggled to stay healthy at multiple positions. So if they can remain healthy, then that's going to be a big plus for Caleb Williams for sure. And you mentioned their weapons, right? Keenan Allen would be such a great weapon for a first-year quarterback to have, given that he can stay healthy because that's been a legitimate yeah, concern. We know DJ Moore has a versatile chess piece. He brought up De DeAndre Swift. So the Bears overall, you know, they're, they're sitting okay. I'm not going to say sitting pretty, but they're definitely on their way to to getting this rebuild on the right track and defensively I think they ranked top 12 maybe in the league last year so the Bears aren't exactly in the worst the worst place to bring in a rookie quarterback and you know I, there's been a narrative out there talking about Justin Fields saying oh you know he he had some he had some good support why are we saying that the Bears have a good support system now but that Justin Fields didn't have one well, the truth is that Justin Fields did have a career year as a passer in 2023. The thing is, I don't have a good level of faith when it comes to, or I should say high level of faith when it comes to the Bears offensive coaching staff. So Caleb Williams could be that undoubted number one quarterback in this class, but is this offensive staff ready to take advantage of this young player? Mm. And I, I guess one more, Jesse uh, from Lewisburg has kind of just reminded me a little bit. Came up, uh, they're proposing the new rule with the hip drop tackling, and maybe it'll be a penalty or not. What are your thoughts on overall on that rule if it's passed? Uh, I'm not too big of a fan. I'll tell you that. If if this goes through, it'll be a 15 yard penalty for the hip drop tackle. And I'm not going to be someone who says 
hey, the hip drop tackle has never been used intentionally to injure a player. I'm not saying that at all, mm-hmm. but I definitely know that there's been instances where the hip drop tackle was utilized, where it was accidental and a player has been injured. And the problem when it comes to this rule is the referees, the officials – have to have a good understanding where they can objectively rule on it. But again, if you see a hip drop tackle and there was no ill intent, that's still going to be a 15-yard penalty. I mean, hypothetically, imagine a third and two, halfback toss to the weak side, the linebacker is in position to make the play. He reaches out right before the sticks, grabs the running back with both arms, swings his legs up, and that's a hip drop tackle, automatic 15 yards. Did he mean for that to happen? You can't say. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty either way. So that's why – that's a reason why I'm not exactly in uh, full support of this new rule. Jordan DeJaney. Yes, sir. Hey, man, we're glad you made it out of Colorado. I'm glad you made it back to Tennessee, and uh, we'll have to get you in the studio to come hang out with us. We promise you won't get stuck in here or have to direct any tow trucks. (laughs) It'll be a smooth transition. Yeah, I just want to sign your cast on your your leg. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that happens appreciate you guys thanks for having me on the show go james madison let's make it to the sweet 16 baby there you go oh, jordan yeah. Janney, our oh, uh wow. wednesday guest always in this hour talking nfl all right jesse and lewisburg is on the phone wants to talk about the hip drop tackle also there's some sec football scheduling news that we'll get to that as well before we wrap up this wednesday edition of blaine and mickey powered by all four seasons garage doors Hey, Tennessee, it's Blaine Bishop here, and with the unpredictable weather hitting us hard, it's crucial you ensure your home is equipped for any challenge. So don't let the next power outage uh, catch you off guard. Cool Ray's heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical has your back. And they're offering an incredible $1,500 off select at-home generators. And yes, you heard it right, $1,500 off. So don't gamble with your family's safety. Act now and secure your peace of mind with Cool Ray. And if that's not enticing enough, take advantage of their $49 tune-up for your HVAC system. It's perfect for ensuring your home stays comfortable in any weather. And if you've been thinking about upgrading to a new HVAC system, they're offering free estimates on replacements. And their expert comfort consultants are ready to guide you toward the perfect solution for your home. So cool Ray, keeping Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. Visit CoolRay.com to take control of your home's comfort and safety. That's CoolRay.com.
Lane and Mickey, 104.5. The Zone will get right to the phones here in just a second. This is per Ross Dellinger. SEC announces the expected eight-game schedule for 2025. Schools will play the same opponents in 25 that they are scheduled to play in 2024 with sites changed for equal home and away competition over the course of two seasons. Uh-oh. S- same, just... Just home and away changes. Just flip the cities. So flip with, the switch. So yep. with that, for Tennessee, uh, their home there opponents, Arkansas, Georgia, Oklahoma, Vanderbilt, their road opponents would be Alabama, Florida, Kentucky, Mississippi State. Ooh. That's – I'm looking at this. The two worst road schedules have got to be Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Like, it's bad. Uh, here's Vanderbilt's at Alabama, at South Carolina, which depending on how that team turns out right, in a couple years. Right, but the environment, the environment is still pretty bad. At Tennessee and at Texas. That's for Vanderbilt. Now they can't play themselves. Uh, and then Arkansas is at LSU, at Ole Miss, at Tennessee, at Texas. <laughs> that is just br- that is a brutal road <laughs> conference schedule. Oh boy, man, right. it's SEC, dude. It's it's all so brutal. I mean, it, it's like people looking at one bracket in the NCAA going, "This one looks really bad." It, it's all really hard. Right. Right. UT has Ole Miss. Remember, I've been used to talking about Ole Miss. I saw uh, our guys on a SEC podcast had Ole Miss second best team in the right. <laughs> SEC. Oh, and and I, SEC said, I said, I remember something down. Y'all got to beat Ole Miss. He's like, I don't know. Ole Miss is out there pretty good. Hey, we better be worried about them. We probably need to track that rascal down next week, talk some spring previews and stuff. With yeah, the SEC spring back. practices have been getting underway. Yeah, we Oh, man. Yeah. We, we got a leg whip, uh, Mr. Dark. <laughs> Do we with him? That's the court. I mean, the quarterback, right? Isn't that his name? Jackson, Jackson Dart. Dart. Yeah. Uh, you having him be that and their Miss. 500 transfer portal additions that they've got. I'm Transfer to the SIP. Yeah, but that's they got to. But guess what? People don't realize football is the biggest chemistry sport that's out there. They got to come to chemistry. If you got the guys come in there and then think, uh oh. I'm a one man show. They're going to do their own thing. That takes time to develop that. So I don't know when they play them, but it doesn't happen overnight. Like people think you don't have to have the best team you have to have the best unit yep and so sometimes it comes in those guys transfer this they're all about me 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 and then some guys get jealous of you 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 and you make this and i don't make that and that divides see that well, you called that as soon as the NIL stuff started happening. Yep. It's like, wait a second, this guy's a second string quarterback. I've been here four years as a starting linebacker, and this guy makes more than two hundred and fifty thousand a year, and I make seventy five. You know, he's We're getting talking about young people now, so yep. that that can easily happen. All right, let's get these calls. My bad. Let's get it. Uh, hip drop and hip hop with Jesse and Lewisburg. What's up, Jesse? Not Jerome. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking, <laughs> yes. thanks for, uh, taking my call, and I appreciate you not uh, leaving me on hold like some of the other shows do for a real long time. Uh, what I was calling about is that hip drop tackle, and I was going to direct it toward Blaine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are they supposed to do now, Blaine? I mean, you can't hit the quarterback in the head. You can't hit the quarterback in the knees. Now you can't sling him because they're going to consider that a hip drop tackle. Are you supposed to bake him cupcakes and send him flowers? Why are they getting paid millions of dollars when you can't even touch them? Jesse. It makes no sense. Like, I mean, you know, if they were going to do this, they should have done it at the very end of last season because then it would have been worth keeping Derrick Henry on the couple-year deal because there's no way you're going to be able to tackle him now. So, <laughs> you know, like, I love that we're going to a passing team and everything, but if you are going to change the rules, it would have been nice to know that right at the end of the Super Bowl, and we might have considered keeping that bulldozer because I don't see how anybody's going to bring him to the ground and some of these other bigger backs, you can forget it. It's two-hand touch now uh, to me. If they do that, it's over for it. Uh, the concussion and the CTE, I get it, but make them sign something that says you know what the deal is uh, and get out there and play because this ain't it. And I'm sure you know from your playing days, I, I'm sure you made a million of those hip drop times. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesse, thank you man. Thank you for making your call. Yeah. I, I didn't really realize. I mean, we were all talking about it off air, but, uh, man, how, how are you going to be able to tackle? I thought it was more reference to the quarterbacks. But I'm I'm sure it's involved with all the players. But yep. uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. I, I really the times that I actually did it myself, and I thought it was a way of being safe. To be honest, not how they're saying that it's actually, you know, you're trying to hurt somebody. Right. So I, it was kind of caught me off guard there when they first start talking about this. Uh, maybe last year, like wow. And then you could see some guys doing it intentionally, mm-hmm. and I think some guys are just trying to fight to make a play. 
So it's going to be really interesting when a guy, incidentally, that happens because that's the only way he could have got him, and then they're going to call that flag, as you mentioned, Mickey, and it's going to cost him a game. Yeah, it's tough. I, I don't like it. Let's uh, squeeze in this last phone call. Got about a minute of the show left. Tommy in Nashville. Hey, Tommy. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, Jordan said that he didn't think there was any problem with Marvin Harrison. Listen, this guy's not even talking to the media. If you were the general manager of a team that was going to take him, would you maybe think that in the future he's going to hold out or do something like that? <laughs> because he won't even talk to the media. I guess he's getting a lot of his advice from his dad. I'll hang up and listen. I appreciate the phone call, Tommy. <laughs> Well, I know his dad was kind of an introvert, too, to a certain extent. Uh, we, we don't know if he's actually talking to the scouts and the general manager and the coaches, though. Right. So that's all I can say about that because he can't go without talking to nobody. Uh, so <laughs> I get to the media, you know, and I understand it, uh, but he's got to be – they have to have conversations with him uh, when you're talking about the coach staff and scouting department and, you know, GMs and everything else, so. I'm assuming he's doing that, but I, I could be totally wrong on that. And he doesn't have to talk to the media now. Right. Now nah, I talk to us. He will, he, he, might, he will when he gets to the NFL. But, hey, day but, he gets but, drafted, he's going to fly somewhere and have to talk to the media. Here's what I would have proposed to him. This is now the time to have good practice on how it's going to be mm. when you're in the National Football League. So let's don't make it something of this really big and get the practice in now where yep. it really doesn't count. You can't hurt yourself in, a, in an interview here. Well, our interview for today is over with. 3HL, you want to interview them, you can meet them. They're live. They're at Twin Peaks and Madison today. So go on out there and enjoy some food and hang out with the crew. Get your brackets filled out, people. But in the meantime. In between time. Peace. We'll Happy Friday. I mean Wednesday. We'll yep. see you Monday. Yes.